Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another movie review. Today, we're going to be talking about the recently released The Glitch in the Matrix. It is a documentary film directed by Rodney Asher, and its subject matter is simulation theory. Um, if you don't know who Rodney Asher is, he's kind of been around for a few years. Most notably, he directed the documentary Room 237, which was about some of the kind of crazier, weirder, more out there, esoteric uh, conspiracy theories or theories about the film The Shining. Uh, this film, this, the, uh, the plot synopsis here is, are we in fact living in a simulation? This is the question postulated, wrestled with, and ultimately argued for in the latest provocation from acclaimed docu documentary stylist Rodney Asher. Through archival footage, compelling interviews with real people shrouded in digital avatars, and a collection of cases from some of our most iconoclastic figures in contemporary culture. So yeah, um, Rodney Asher does not really make straightforward documentaries. What he does is kind of do almost like visual essays, almost kind of more like a journalistic effort. You know, he's he's calling through archive footage. So there's you know Elon Musk, there's Neil deGrasse Tyson, there's Philip K. Dick. Philip K. Dick is kind of used as a framing device almost. Um, if you don't know, he gave this kind of famous talk in uh, Germany in the seventies about maybe thinking that we lived in a simulation. That was something he postulated, basically. And, and uh, you know, Philip K. Dick, if you don't know, noted science fiction author, kind of a pulp science fiction author of the 60s and 70s. <clears throat> you know, they've made movies based on his work, like Blade Runner, Total Recall, um, among others. I'm trying to think. I'm kind of bl blanking right now. Oh, A Scanner Darkly, one of my favorites, actually. Richard Linklater's A Scanner Darkly. Um, so anyways, but the way he approaches these things is kind of to not necessarily try to prove something. This is not making a scientific case for simulation theory. What he's doing is talking about how the theory itself kind of intersects with culture, the kind of people that are into it, and how it intersects with pop culture as well. Uh, movies and how people develop these ideas, how they're open to these ideas. Uh, you know, the, the movie The Matrix is brought up a bunch. And I don't, I don't want to get too into it because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Not that it's something you can really spoil, but there's a lot of interesting perspectives that are brought up. Um, the way he, like, the interview subjects he has. These are not, like, most of them are not scientists. They're not really particularly, like, professional in this world. He wants to know how, you know, kind of smart people that are kind of plugged into the Internet, like, how do they feel about it? And how has it shaped their life, their, their personal philosophies. And that's kind of what the documentary engages with. That's what, it, that's the road it goes down. It's not trying to prove it to you. It's not, it's more of a personal journey for these people. And that's something that's reflective in kind of all of Asher's work. Like I, I mentioned room two, three, seven, which is a great documentary to actually make a great companion piece to a glitch in the matrix in a very broad way. Uh, because that's more what it's about. It's about the projection of individuals, what they take from it, what they think it means. What does it mean for their lives? What does it mean for the world? What does it mean for existence? It's something that's not, it's not delved into like, you know, in terms of like the theory and the probabilities and stuff. That stuff's brought up a little bit, but it's really not the focus of it. In fact, so much so that I think a lot of people kind of maybe went into this thinking that it would be that it would be more of a, like a discovery channel, scientific exploration of the, of simulation theory. And it's just not, um, doesn't make it any less impactful though. Like Rodney Asher is a great filmmaker, you know, his other documentaries, he did this one called primal screen, which is kind of a short doc. I think it's on shutter, which is about the, uh, the trailer for this movie called magic starring Anthony Hopkins about uh, a ventriloquist. And it's kind of his evil ventriloquist dummy that kind of takes over his life. But what the, it's about is actually people watching the trailer when they were kids on TV and seeing the movie late at night and how it affected them and what it made them think and how that intersected with this larger part of their lives with like toy commercials and how they thought about these kind of almost what you would consider a banal or old hat subject of ventriloquism and how it kind of breathed new life into it, new possibilities, new terrors. It made them think about their world differently. 
Same thing goes with his other documentary called The Nightmare, which is about sleep paralysis and the common stories that people have that experience sleep paralysis. You know, seeing this shadowy figure with red eyes in the corner and what that made them think and what do they project onto it? What do they think it means for their lives? And the same thing here. That's that's the that's the tact he takes here. And I think he does a really great job because he's like a good filmmaker. You know, Roddy Asher, I don't know I don't know if he would be like a good narrative filmmaker in a sense, but the way he structures his movies, the way he builds upon things and how he builds the layers and how he paces things is very much like a narrative. It draws you in, giving you these little these little tidbits, these little crumbs of uh, you know, of information and then kind of subverting your expectations about what that information might mean later on in the documentary. Uh, and I think he does a really great job with it because he touches on everything from just like kind of the boring scientific perspective, albeit briefly, to kind of people that are just have more fun with it, like to think about it, to people that take it really seriously and so serious that it becomes like a detriment to their life. Uh, there's a kind of the last 15 or 20 minutes of the movie almost focuses on this singular story about somebody that was really obsessed with the Matrix and how it how it kind of caused them to do something awful. And uh, it's it kind of ends on almost a darker note. Because if you really think about simulation theory, there is kind of a subtext of darkness to it, right? This idea that we're not actually living in a physical world, that it's all in our minds. And, and then if you start thinking about that, you must start thinking about, well, maybe, maybe the world that we're escaping from is worse than the ones that we're living through. The lives we're escaping from, the lives we're escaping from. It's an interesting thing to ponder, you know. Um, but it's something I've always just, I've always been fascinated with simulation theory. It's not something I've ever put a lot of stock into, but it's not one I can completely discount in the same way I think maybe Neil deGrasse Tyson might think of it. Because if you look at the trajectory of human progress, especially when it comes to technology, um, we're kind of trying to recreate some sort of, some sort of reality virtually. It seems actually what drives quite a bit of science and entertainment, yeah, right? Like VR and video games and all of these kinds of things. It's a preoccupation that mankind has. So if you were to think of that, you're in a simulation. What's to say that the trajectory of mankind would not be the same inside of a simulation as it is outside of it? And then how many layers deep of an, into a simulation are we? How many cycles have we gone through? You know, this is something that, you know, the Matrix definitely touches on a little bit. It's something Philip K. Dick was kind of preoccupied. He was always preoccupied with this idea of kind of uh, unreality and paranoia and how you can't trust your surroundings. You can't trust what you see. You can't trust what you feel. You can't trust what you think because how do those ideas get there? Um, and there's a lot of stuff like that in this documentary. And I can't recommend it more. I really, really enjoyed it. If you're at all into like science fiction or genre stuff, I think you'll enjoy it overall. I think it's something you'll be totally into um, in the same way that I am. Just like kind of an intellectual curiosity. It's fun to listen to people talk about it. You know, I've, I've spent many, many nights up playing video games or whatever. I always throw like a podcast on or something when I'm playing by myself or playing golf. I play <laughs> everybody's golf. I play pool. I play chess. And uh, I'll listen to podcasts and watch debates. And I used to watch a lot of debates with, like, you know, physicists and philosophers and psychologists talking and debating about simulation theory. And it's how probable or unprobable it is. And it's a lot of fun. It's just, it's just kind of a fun way to spend an hour and 48 minutes. That's another thing I like about Asher's stuff, that while it is thoughtful and ponderous at times, he's also very succinct. Like, you know, he's coming at this stuff probably with a thesis in mind before he really sets down and starts constructing it. Or even in the subjects he chooses to kind of explore and talk to the people themselves. Um, so there's there's a point to it. It doesn't feel nebulous at the end. You know, maybe, you know, a, a, just because of the subject matter, maybe it feels a little open ended. But he's trying to impart to us this kind of an empathy center this kind of exposing this part of the human experience. And why are we fascinated by these things? Why are we fascinated with these ideas? 
You know, why does everybody think the idea of simulation theory is cool or interesting at the very least, right? And especially people of my generation, there seems almost like a preoccupation with it in terms of the idea that you can rationalize your apathy. You cannot take responsibility because what does it matter? And the dark road that can lead. And uh, I, I like the documentary for getting into that stuff, exploring those ideas um, in a way that I felt like actually made something of a point. It made a broader, deeper, like humanistic point rather than trying to make a technical, scientific, like go at it, you know, and there's my phone. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, definitely check it out if you have the opportunity. I'm sure it'll show up on a streaming service or something in the near future, but if you like Rodney Asher's other stuff, you like Room 237, you like The Nightmare, you like Primal Screen, I think this is well worth your time. And uh, yeah, it would be worth the six bucks to rent it and support Rodney Asher. Because this is kind of, I think just people, people are coming into this movie thinking it's something it's not and then kind of judging it based on that expectation. Because it's actually, surprisingly enough, because when I was done watching, I was like, wow, that was, that was great. Another great Rodney Asher documentary. And uh, come to find out, it's pretty got pretty mixed reviews. Not everybody's cup of tea. But a lot of the negative notices I've found are people upset or unsatisfied by his approach to the material. They want it to be more of like a serious, hard-nosed, scientific like look at simulation theory, and it's just not that. It's just not that. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, there's a bunch of links in the description for Facebook, for Instagram, for my Twitter, for my brother's Dan's Twitter. Also, uh, leave a comment if you've seen this movie, if you like Rodney Asher, or just about simulation theory in general. Is it something that interests you? Is it something that you find that you find evil? Do you find is a waste of time? Whatever. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And uh, you guys have the best day ever, and we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.